Okay. So I want to just start with minutes because probably somebody should, we should be keeping them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's right. And um, Judy had sent us a draft of minutes from last time too. Um, so I didn't think to print out. I'm sorry. Um, and I don't even know if I can pull them up to go over them. I bet Silly can do it. Well, maybe mm -hmm. I. Well, I don't know where they would be. Um, I'm using Jessica's computer me. for this meeting because I mine is at. No, I have it here. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I do actually have it. Um, if you could email it to Sylvie, she could probably share it. Or if you email it to, let's see. Um, uh, I don't want to go into Jessica's outlook. So let's see. Are you going, can you go into your email? Uh, I can maybe walk up this one. Next one. First. This might take a minute. Um, would you, would it be possible to, all right, maybe we should just email them to it's Jessica. Like um, I can, oh, do you sorry. want me to email it to Jessica? Um, yeah, I guess so. I just okay. emailed it. I just emailed it to you, Sylvie. Right. I think it's going to. It would take me a minute to try and get logged into to add the account to, to um log into on this computer because um this is Jessica's laptop. We're in okay. the you want me to email it to Jessica? Uh yeah, if someone could do that, that'd be good. Or maybe it's here. Um no, okay. Somebody can email it though. Are you doing it, Judy, or you want me to? Yeah, I'm doing it. Okay. But really the point of bringing this up is we should be keeping minutes of this meeting too, right? Yeah, yeah the, the Historical Commission alternates. Everybody but the chair takes turns. I think that's a fine way to do it. Judy, you're on the Historical Commission, correct? Correct. I had a question for you. Back about 2013, I maybe it was 2015, somewhere around there, um, I had a gentleman by the name of Professor Michael Gramley come down to the property. Uh, he brought a bunch of his uh, amateur archaeologists down and they did a dig on the back side of my property looking for evidence of uh, uh, paleo settlement. Um, they did find a, a, a locust cluster there and some other artifacts. And uh, he sent me a publication, a copy of a publication that was going in a archaeological journal and I was wondering if the historical commission would want a copy of that. They'd love it. And the historical society as well. Yeah. Have to Gramley, Gramley was one of the ones that helped me with the the uh paleontological the thing, yeah. stuff I did for the two fiftieth exhibit. He's, oh really? No, Michael's yeah. great. I I really like Michael a lot. I talk with him often. So uh, he he wants me to he he encourages me not to break the law, but you know, let alone <laughs> dig into the swamp and look for anything because there's a section where the amphitheater is back our house, and he is convinced that there'd be uh, evidence 
buried in the swamp, but <laughs> I'm less likely to do so. Uh, it may well, maybe day. someday we can get a grant to do a, an official dig there. Uh, yeah, there, there's a few artifacts. I think uh, we found a locust where there was a um, campsite. Uh, actually, very close to where we already have a fire pit, and uh, he, it was a chipping station, and they found a bunch of artifacts there, oh, great. Uh, like hammer stones and such. Um, but there, there's more to be found. Uh, just the other day, I found the half of the arrowhead in the field. So there's more around there. Just I don't know where you specifically look for it. I mean, I was digging in where the garlic was and I found a bunch of calcine bone at the... Well, Alan McArdle has archaeological experience. You might want to talk to... Do you know Who's him? That? Who's that? Alan. Alan McArdle. He lives up on um, Conway Road. No, I don't know him at all. Um, anyway, uh, we can talk about it later. Are you able to see the minutes now, Judy? Yep. Okay, was Leslie there? We had a quorum, I assume she, that was she. I think Becky made the quorum. We counted Sylvie. No, we didn't count Sylvie. Count Sylvie? No. I don't think you had a, okay. had a quorum, but you didn't vote on anything like that. So uh, it, it wasn't, I didn't think it was an issue. Well, we did vote on the the draft to take to the Select board. Well, we we drafted okay. something. And okay. So we should take Leslie off. Yeah, I think so. We. Okay. What we did was we prepared something, and then sent it to everybody for review. Fine, uh, I can do that. Um. So we didn't actually vote. We just finalized with. Fine. People's review. Yep. And all of us were at the select board meeting, so we don't don't necessarily need to talk about it here. Well, we need to see if there are any other changes to the minutes. That's. I tried to be. Did you move it? Um, comprehensive and not too sp I'm fairly general. Yeah, I think they're good taking Leslie off. And... I'll do that. I move we approve with that amendment. Can we vote on anything if we don't have a quorum today? We have a quorum. Well, minutes. That's voting. Yeah, I would, I would second the motion if we can get away with it. Well, Sylvie, what do you suggest? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can we can leave it. I'll I'll make that a that amendment. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can review re it next re time. Group. Let it pile up and yeah. you can vote on a bunch of stuff. We can. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll keep minutes tonight. That's fine. Well, normally the chair doesn't have to, but okay. I know, but I've got lots of experience doing it, so it's fine. Um, the one thing that's different for these is you have to have to list the document, any documents that are re reviewed. Okay. Okay. Um, I think then you can stop sharing, Sylvie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's let's talk about the grants and the funding efforts where we're at with those. So, how you sent a request to the Historic Society last night for last night's meeting? Yes, and they have sent me a. A letter of support this afternoon, which or this evening, which I haven't opened yet, but 
right. support for restoration of the exterior. And the Historical Commission will also do a letter of support. Rich, um, I think maybe you know, the more community involvement you can show, the better likelihood you have of getting a grant. I'm sorry? The more community support you can show, the better it looks for getting a grant. So we're trying to get us, get letters of support. Well, I understand. Okay, well, great. Great job starting with that. Um, and related, Fred talked to Stan Rosenberg and his aide because they were together at a function in Deerfield and they expressed some interest as well. Oh, great. Um, so I sent them the RFP because it includes so much information and the um, proposal we gave to the select board. They accepted, so. Tremendous. That's, that's we'll see if anything comes of that. Um, but they, I guess, they said we'll look into state possibilities for funding. Um, okay, you want to go through the grants? Well, there are three um, immediate ones. The one that's most immediate is probably the least consequential. It's the, the National Trust Heart Family Fund one that will only fund, that funds planning. So it would fund a, a help fund a consultant feasibility study. It, it's intended for small towns and the intent is to try and involve townspeople or the community in preservation and to educate people about preservation. Um, one of the uses is that it can be used to hire a consultant to save in a threatened building or to help save, which is our category. The maximum grant is 15,000. They go from five to 15,000. This is, this is a national grant. This is the, na the National Trust. They say it's highly competitive. It's limited to towns of 7,000 or less. Um, I've been working on the grant application. My, I told Sylvie my guess is that we'd be lucky. Well, I wouldn't give us more than a 25% chance of getting it, but 25% uh, chance of something like twelve to $15,000 seems worth making the effort for. Can I interrupt just a second? Do you, do you have to list what you'd be using the grant for? Yeah, you have to, you have to outline your project, yeah. which in this case is, I'm describing it as the re rehabilitation or, or restoration and reuse of the building. And because this one is for planning, then while we're pursuing, the other two grants are more for construction and doing the exterior. So this one would be to help fund a feasibility study to hire a consultant to determine the best uses. Can I ask one more question? Of course, Rich. That, I just don't want to interrupt and I have a No, no, by all means. Um, my brain works and all of a sudden words come out. Can't stop it. <laughs> so, um, what I was kind of one of the things that I was considering as we're going through this year uh, earlier in the week was traffic survey, and this may be um, a good opportunity to add that to that grant, the potential for a traffic survey and a need for it. If there were going to be any kind of retail space in there, traffic survey would be really important to be able to encourage somebody to take an interest of the in that space, whether or not there's enough traffic to, to support. Them. Yeah, um, I think I think that's a great thought. I think it's one step ahead. Yeah, okay. One step behind, maybe we're this would be determining the best uses. 
if you right. thought the best use was a retail space. Wouldn't that be necessary to, to recognize whether the retail space was viable in itself? Well, possibly. Yeah. Anyway, this is maybe this is only gonna fund up to fifteen thousand. So far from Joan Switzit, we got an estimate of they thought twenty five thousand would oh this also requires a hundred percent match. The heart one requires hundred percent match. Yep. Okay. Which would come from the community CPA fund, I think. Um so Joan Switzit gave us an estimate of a preliminary design estimate. I'm not quite sure where we stand with them, but the best number I have from them now is that twenty five thousand might do for a for a feasibility study. And I'm thinking, well, if that requires town input and maybe a, a survey or some mailings or something to determine how people feel about different uses, you might want to add, I don't know, something like a thousand dollars on. So my current numbers, I wanted to to submit something to them that didn't sound like we were aiming precisely at 25,000. I came up with 24,500 as the total project cost of which they would pay half. <laughs> um, so this this isn't the right place to do that, but it's, it's a great thought. And there's so many restrictions on this. It, it has to be done within six months. That, um, but anyway, it's worth doing and it's, forcing me and I think in a few days, Sylvie, to try and put this project into words and get it, get it um, focused. And, and so feasibility? Feasibility is, is when somebody like the architectural firm, Joan Switzer, or somebody like that comes and looks at the building, looks at the building code, and helps you figure out what uses make the most sense. Okay. And then they probably draw preliminary drawings to show what that would look like. Okay. We did so, that for the center school. On for the town hall? Yeah, I'm sorry for the town hall. That's okay. So on that point, is that the same thing as a concept plan? Probably. From an architect? Close. Okay. Yeah, I suspect. I think concept plan would be more specific. Yeah. I think the concept would be once you I can't really explain that. It sounds to me like if you have a concept, then the architect would do the plan. Is right. what I guess. I'm I'm not really, but yeah, I, I think it's a broader scope than, than that. Okay. So it means more than just what's possible. It it means what it you means know, taking, what's, taking what's possible and narrowing it down and giving you input to, to pick. Okay. Okay. And probably in the process, you pick and then they draw the plans. Yeah. Feasibility would be looking at your constraints uh, largely, I think. Um, and um, yeah, then discussing the various options that you have available. Um, I just wanted to mention, um, to your point, Rich, uh, FERCOG has... Um, a traffic count request form. So if that's something we'd be interested in getting a sense of, I could um, submit a form asking for traffic count data for, for that street, just to see. Uh, if I were to go back to one of the threads I was reading, uh, there was some talk, it should have been at this meeting, but um, on the possibility of having some type of market in place. Mm -hmm. I know that's been talked about on a regular basis. And I'm sorry, Richard, marketing what? A, a market in the basement, either a coffee shop yeah. or a small grocery store or something to that effect. Um, I had a lot of thoughts on that idea, but one of my considerations was is if that was something that was in the feasibility study, that whoever would we could talk into um, accepting a contract based on our completed building 
uh, would require a traffic study to realize whether or not there is a significant enough traffic to, to manage a market of some sort. And based on the times of day the traffic runs through there, whether it would be reasonable to assume that there's enough traffic during breakfast to serve coffee, donuts, such a thing, and enough traffic through lunch to, to support a uh, lunch crowd. And then, you know, in what the traffic would be in the afternoon yep. to see whether or not the business would last, you know, past a certain particular time frame. As the traffic calms down at five, then they would know. But this would be important for any yep, type of right. business to know. Well, yeah. as as you have been submitting these your reports on your estimates, I'm starting to think that there are a lot of ancillary fees which we should be building into the the other two grants. This one is the bad example. But the other two are much bigger, and they both encompass both construction and planning. Uh -huh. um, so we should be developing a list, especially as we're starting to, I think, to rule out having some exact, having some estimates of actual construction work to do, having a list of tests and surveys and things we need to help implement this will be yeah. really important. And the other two grants are great for that. I can work on that. And I can take what I've already given you and I can uh, bullet point it, but then I can work with uh, the carpenter. I'm yeah. going to, I, I need to contact the carpenter yet, but in, before doing so, I felt like I really needed the scope of the repairs better understand what it is that I'd be asking for. And the, and then also in order to get some kind of a general estimate, access to the building, I think Jen, do you have a keynote? I do. Okay. So I, I have to know who they need to contact. I need to have a little bit more information. So when I do contact someone for work, I can- My I can thought work was the, probably, and, and I could be all wet, that the the roof roofing contractor would probably have a have a carpenter on staff that could deal. But with the roofing issues, we would need to have an engineer come in uh, and give us a plan on the roof structure repair. Yep. That has to precede any roofing contractor coming in because they would need to know whether that was done or not. And if it well, wasn't well, done, if they could do it, they, the, the okay, engineer so, could. Let so us the know roofing contractor needs. can't do that? Uh, they they would need to know that first. We need to know whether or not it, we'd have to have an engineer look at it to just okay. sort of discuss what needed to okay. be done so they could bid to that. Okay, when the when the roofing contractor does come, I think probably they could comment on the carpenter repairs for the cupola and the pediment. Okay, I'm I'm sure they could. A reason to separate it out though is that if either of those pieces separate or together are less than 150,000, then it wouldn't require the bid process. No, it would re always require the bid process. It wouldn't require a DCAM. Right, okay. DCAM. Anything Extra I think over- Certain certification. Right. But I think, I think anybody of a caliber you want to do this would be DCAM qualified. I don't know, but anyway, the, they could do the bid. Okay. All we're getting now is the bid, uh, the prices. We're not putting it out to bid. Right, we're not putting it out to bid, but so. So if somebody can break out, okay, the cupola costs this, the pediment costs that, the st structural repairs cost this, the slate costs this, we can put that in the grant and then we can decide how to bid it later. Right. The problem Rich is running into is that most of the contractors he's talking to are saying we want a better sense of how the building's going to be used. That because doesn't it... matter for the roof. Not necessarily for the roof, no. That's I, it shouldn't I matter understand. for the roof, the rate masonry or the windows. Right. But my my process is in order to kind of, I haven't talked to anybody for wasn't there somebody contacting you? That was on my list too. So that's a but what I'm trying to understand is from 
is I believe an engineer needs to be able to look at the structural aspects of the building that where Keith was saying the walls okay. falling apart yep. and starting to come down to make sure that whatever repairs are done are done reasonably to code or, or to code and to and are safe, et cetera. That information is what any contractor will need so okay. they can build to that. Fine. And repair to that. Um, and if getting the cupola work done could be done ahead of time by another contract, depending on what needs to be done, but I need to be able to get them in the building and get them to look at it and give an estimate on that type of work. Okay. Uh, and then the well, you're, you're obviously ahead of me, but I was figuring if somebody had the lift up there and could get there and look at it, well, you'd save a step, but you're, you're doing a much more thorough job. So thank you. What I'm trying to understand, what I'm trying to hopefully get for us here is real life under, uh, understanding of the cost. And the best way to do that with a contractor, because contractors will come over and, and do, do a little free estimate, but they have to also, you know, because of the time constraints in trying to make you run in the job, it has to have value to them. Of course. So if everything falls within, if I can give them all the information that they could possibly need, so it's it's quick and easy, then it, then they can give us something that we can yep. use. And so that's what I'm trying to understand: how, right. where the access is, who do we need engineering to study, where do okay, we get well, that, how does that happen? Well, I think the important thing is to focus on the stuff that isn't use dependent. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But it's it's some of the we're we're definitely having some, you know, even the abatement stuff for asbestos and lead. It depends on the use. Okay, it surprised but, me. But think what we what Rich has learned. We can include fees for the inspection, which we now have an estimate of, in the comes, application. If if I were to come. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Julia. Sorry. No, well, I just, I think if we accumulate as much as we can in terms of what we can do pre, pre use definition. And some of that is testing and fees. Yeah. You know, fees for testing would count. Maybe we can't include the fees for the abatement. But no, we can, but the testing, but, but to, the testing to then we can make throw the in. abatement and plan. And the same with the traffic study and things like that that would help determine the, the use so, so or, or going. I'm sorry. Do the do you need that information in order to apply for the grants? Because what No, you don't. Okay. What I'm trying to do is to put what I think I need or we need is the cost of the roof repair with the structural stuff, the window restoration and the masonry. The, no restoration especially the front, the front steps, basically. Yeah. Masonry and the window uh, windows, we can probably do there, unless there's an abatement requirement to that. Um, I think so. Um, rest, the restoration of the windows on the inside would require a, a Somebody to come in and do testing anyway. Well, if she's going to take them out and redo them, if she does that, then yeah, those would. Yeah, I think I think there. she would assume that she's taking them out and redoing them. In which case, that's that's implicit. All right. So if, if I can just jump into what we we're talking about, the any abatement it is subject to the end use. Mm -hmm. So in Massachusetts or in nationwide for that matter, um, abatement, you can't have it, it changes with the end use. So if we have your, just a community space and we have office Your email space. was very clear on that. Okay, well, because of that, it seems that if we can get the end use, the, certain, the feasibility study anchored down and done, that feasibility study will give us a world of information for where we can go from there. Yeah, for but not only the septic, because we'll know what the end use will be and what the demand will be of the building. The septic will be easy to recognize. We do know that there's going to be some cost issues with um, and and with whether it's in a wetland. It looks like it, it's in a, the the um, 
It's not in a wetland that's in the agricultural area. So it's in the protection area. zone two, three, three. But, but that's the second round of grants. Yeah, okay. That's, that's if we get anything here, we get as much work as we can done. And while we're getting that work done, we do the feasibility study. And then we apply for another round of grants to do this other stuff. So do we want estimates or quotes? Estimates, estimates. all park estimates. We're not ready for quotes. Um, so I have a question they, about- But they need to understand that it's for a, a municipal project. So it's public bid laws. Um, I have a question about the front steps because so I've had a whole exchange with Jill Yarmy is how I'm saying it. I have to ask him how to say <laughs> it. Um, and one of the things he said is if construction costs equal or exceed 30% of the full and fair cash value of the building, then the entire building must be brought into ADA requirements. So we have to make the building accessible. Um, there are exceptions for historic buildings. Uh, tell us about those. It can be, if you can determine that that it, this building is, is uh, and uh, what do you call it? Contributing building to the to a national register district. It's listed in the national register. Mm -hmm. If if it would be detrimental to the to the historic nature of the building to do accessibility, then then you can apply for a waiver. I don't think either way it affects the front steps because those are more an architectural feature than a, nobody ever uses those. That's. Well, it, do we, does the historic nature of the building mean we should plan on keeping those? You have to keep those. Okay. That's what I wanted to be clear on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the building would. And I think if the other thing is that from George Dole at Jones Whitsett, if the upstairs is residential, then it doesn't necessarily have to be accessible. Right. Um, the downstairs, if it has a commercial purpose, would have to be. But I think you can get there by regrading so the well, that you lower the side entrances, right? And but that, the, I the think front steps, the front steps are essentially decorative, and and yeah, yeah, they have to be kept. Okay. All right. And the building would look ridiculous without them, actually. Right, of course. Um, but yeah, right, right now, the fact that we have entryways that lead only to steps we've got we're going to have to regrade something yeah, to have I mean, an that's, entryway that's, way. that's coming it's there's no way out of that but right. the issue is whether whether you have to do it for upstairs or not um right yeah i don't think we have to make all three floors accessible well we're we're ahead of ourselves again it's a as if we stick to can we fix the shell mhm mm and worry about that now and try and design as much money and to do all the tests and studies we need. Then we can get okay. to these answers later. Okay. Um, so the roof repair windows and the masonry. Okay, well, May Leslie put the masonry back on my plate. So I'll deal with that. Here's somebody in mind. Yeah, they already gave a quote to Jilly Army in the RFP process and really- They were the ones who worked with Quant Quant on their yeah, uh, silo then, restoration and the, the 
the CPA has already funded them. So that, they're quite comfortable with them as a as a contact. That's great. I think the, the question for them is that the bid they gave may have included, I don't know if it included the structural work or if the structural work wasn't done or whatever. So that, that's- well, Also it will change given that it's a municipality. Okay. I mean, they need to, to say, okay, this is, this is a municipal bid. It's right to work laws. It's change work change orders. I mean, it's a whole different. Mm -hmm. You can't. They have to assume prevailing wage. I mean, have to basically assume union wages. Right. Okay. So it may. I mean, basically, the thing is, I don't. I'm not sure what you mean by structural work on the steps, but yeah, it ought to. They ought to be fixed. <laughs> right. No, it it wasn't structural works on the steps. It was, but there was something in the RFP that referred to structural work, either having already been done or not. I'd forgotten what it was. I don't think it was the steps. So I think could it you, was. Could you share the stuff you have? Um. Yeah. That. That's what I'm quoting now is from the RFP. The bid that was included. Their bid was part of the um. Chile okay. Army bid. Okay. Go on. I'll, I'll go back and look at it. So yeah. And but I think basically the thing is to go back and say, okay, it's now a town-owned project. Yeah. Um, anything you can give us on the exterior masonry. I don't know whether it's repointing. You might ask if the bricks need repointing. Yeah. Um, the steps, certainly. Right. I mean, the Historical Society had a bid on those. An estimate on those steps a long time ago it was it was like forty thousand dollars ten years ago. Um. Okay. I think it. Well, I, it's in Jilly Army's RFP. They got a bid on it. Yeah. Well, but again, it it will be different working for them. I, Partly, right. I think they have to build in time to deal with committees. You know, they, they, their customer has just become a a political body. Mm -hmm. It's but yeah, certainly that's a good... the bid the the whole requirements for what goes into it are different. Okay, so that's a good reminder. It needs to be done above the uh, entryway. I can't imagine there isn't, but I don't know what it is. Well, so I'm trying to think of if I had a carpenter come out there to take a look at everything. I think somebody school. should look at anything they can think of that needs. Right. Work. Is it, what is the pediment? Is that the triangle above? Yeah, the triangle the above and the columns. The triangle above. So any of the any of the main any of the repairs that need to the pediment and any of the work repairs needed to the cupola. And those are things that we're trying to get done right now. But in the masonry, you can also include any pointing. Is that do in fact you need the building needs pointing? Yeah. Um, now the other two grants are much bigger they're both state grants the deadline is june 5th no match requirement um is that the mhc and rural development one is the underutilized properties one that's okay that's the most promising and that's only available to municipalities and only for municipal buildings that are being repurposed for non-municipal use. Right. They seem to have a big budget, but that that automatically constrains the pool of people who are applying. Mm -hmm. Because hopefully, um, and they go up to a million dollars. No, no match required. They will also include planning sorts of things so your your tests for abatement the 
the traffic study, things like that. Permits, you know, other studies can be included. The other one is the Rural Development Fund. That's for small communities. Um, Sylvie, do you know what the grant was that Waitley got last year? Uh, the rural, well, we have- um, It was $84,000. We have a rural small town uh, grant. Is is that the same one? That yeah, they've, they've taken the small town out of the title. It's the same one. Oh, okay. Um, it's for, that's for the water work on Egypt Road. Okay. No, <laughs> I'm I'm not too familiar with what is happening on that project. Um, but um, yeah, that's Wayne's okay. project. So, my thought is to try and cram as much into each the the rural development one essentially has the same criteria for what your what projects are eligible. It's it's available to towns, I think, of 10,000 or less. Um, it's, a, it's what they call a competitive grant. So they score it based on various priorities that are built into the system, whether degree of community support, um, whether it ticks off certain buzzwords in the in the town state guidelines or not. I haven't looked through the that grant or not, but it will be important to try and Sylvie explain how competitive grants work. Oh well, well I mean um uh it's just all that much more important to that your your project um specifically meets the requirements um be they environmental or community um advantageous to the community and things like that um the more you know, boxes you could check off the higher yeah. your score the better yeah and, and as you were saying for, for the one you're working on letters of support go a long way um and you know if they're if you can show that there's a lot of um, uh, support from various uh, facets of the town or things like that helps so my guess is if we come up with i don't know say $700,000 worth of expenses. We'll try, we'll put them all in the, the underutilized fund, underutilized properties grant application. The, the rural development one caps at 500,000. So we'll put as many of the same, same things in there. Sylvia assures me that this is entirely expected that nobody ex thinks you'll get a hundred percent funding of any what you asked for yeah and we will be careful not to double dip if 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 we get the grant we will spread it we won't bill bill them for the same thing twice but but what i'm but i i think at this point the more we can apply for the better Oh, I agree. So what, how do we demonstrate community support? Well, letters, that's, yeah, letters from, from um, the different committees and the select board. Um, if you, if they're, uh, well, committees or, or residents in general, like people who might be uh, beneficially, who might be impacted positively by the project. Um, um, so, I mean, the historical, Society, the and um, let's see who else. Um, we have I the mean, historical commission, the historical society, yeah, the desks for the select board, right? Because it's because we're focusing I mean, on phase one here with the exterior work, I don't think it's really appropriate to go to the final users. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, at some point, you'll want to talk to people who live right around there residents, uh, cyclists, you know, people who would make use of, of the building. Um, like, if we were proposing housing, right? If it's like if you're doing senior housing, housing committee, but we're not at this right. point, yeah, the housing committee. And if you if you were doing like senior housing, for example, then you'd want to talk to um, uh, maybe um, senior center, senior center, yeah. The other thing we can do is show the um, the results from the 
master Sir plan functioning study. Yes. Yeah, at that point, but that won't help for the structural work. Well, it's just a point, a point there is it would we be able to, if we we're going around, would we be able to do a letter of intent and then go around and get signatures to match that letter to add to that letter? Is that how we could do that? Yeah, I think so. Now the the Hart family one only allows two. So I think I would put to well, we'll have two if we board. need it. I, I would rather put the select board than the historical commission, but and the yeah. historical society, the historical commission is critical there. Some mm -hmm. some grants will have like at least three and others will be like capita two and you want to be more strategic, but but some of them just just I think for some of them are unlimited and yeah, and sometimes you can work it into the text. We have the support of. Mm -hmm. I think in this case, the. Um, and also, if you have like um, if you had a, a grocery store, uh, you could also get letters of support from neighboring communities because, you know, any um, thing like that is going to benefit people in the region who might be traveling through or, you know, I mean, it, our, we're small towns, we're closely clustered and it, it's nice to get support from our neighbors. So. You know, your your traffic study is interesting because a huge number of people cut through North Street to go down to Williamsburg from 116. Right, right. Almost everybody coming south on North Street onto Chestnut Plain Road turns onto Haydenville. Yeah. Or or again, people from Williamsburg go to Greenfield and they cut down right. Christian Lane and up Route 5 and 10. Right. Um, the FERCOG, which, how do you spell that? It's uh, um, the FRCOG, Franklin Regional yeah. Council of Governments. Okay. Um, um, and that's free as far as I know. It's a, it's a free request. So I don't know the depth of the um, data, but it's a start. Well, so. what I'm wondering is do they have any collection tool for bicycles? I think it mentions cyclists too. Yeah. Okay, because that, that I think is, that, is it's a request we have. Yeah, it's just a simple form. You give them the, the street name. It's just something that um, cropped up in my email and I thought it would be useful for a couple different things. Um, so I'll give them the, the street information and make that request. Um, and I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll have to find out when they would get back to us about that. I'll have more information about it. Okay. I think it would be great if we had both vehicles and bicycles. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think bicycles will certainly be seasonal, whether or not they have seasonal information. Right, they definitely be seasonal, but now it's the time. Yeah. So, so this has a little section where you can say the purpose of the count, other notes, for example, do you need data for a grant application, concern about speeding, including weekend traffic, include bicycles, that sort of thing. So you how would they keel it <laughs> They're a very powerful organization. <laughs> okay. Um, so Judy, you're doing fine with these grants or you need help? So far yeah. so good. I I'm about halfway through the Heart Heart Family one. What I need mostly Sylvie okay. to do is spark it up so far. I've, okay. I was very tired yeah. when I drafted it. <laughs> okay. I can log in um, and... Uh, I, haven't, and I haven't done the main project part yet, but okay. Okay. yeah, I think so far so good. I need numbers. Okay. So you know, Rich and I will keep working on that. I think uh, Leslie's a good proofreader too. The, um, the heart one is one of these things where you have a you fill it out on the online and it gives you 250 characters in this oh. Oh. thousand characters. <laughs> That's in this pretty button. short. Mm -hmm. Your words perfect. And and characters. I discovered that a character includes a space, which I think is unfair. <laughs> but okay, so they're arguing for longer words. <laughs> okay, so what um what do we need to do? to ask the select board for a letter of support because you'd like that. Right? Well, I think we need to tell them we've we've 
we've gone gangbusters ahead rather than just getting estimates for September and we're trying to get some grants so that so we, we can have wait. some money by September to start doing stuff. Um, and and then we need to tell them to get the grants. We need to demonstrate some support and we would appreciate their help. Okay. Okay. So we should dress. And how often do they meet? Every two weeks, I. Okay. You can check. Wait a minute. Okay. Well, they're meeting tonight. So yeah, they're here. They're in the other room. Okay. So probably not again before. May 1st, but that's all right, all right, because I don't think they're as important for that grant. And for the okay. other one, we have till June. Okay. So, can I try to find time to bring this up? a conversation I, uh, that's off topic of where we are, but it seems like we're at a place where we kind of mellowed our conversation. Is that, under, is that reasonable? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Conversation I was having with the uh, folks here earlier today. Um, one of the possibilities, and I'm not sure what this is probably holding it to myself, probably is helpful. So, <clears throat> talking with one of the Amy's, she had mentioned somebody in town who's a realtor, and apparently, uh, industrial space is at a premium right now. Because there's so little of it in Franklin, New Hampshire County, that's available. Um, what the, the 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 concept that came up during our conversation is the possibility is if we were to move. There's only five people and five offices here in this building, and if we were to move those five offices into the center school and to utilize the top two floors as as meeting spaces. Uh, and then utilize the third third floor as also office space if necessary. We could, the town could either rent this building as an industrial place and clean the, the renting for that, or take advantage of the high prices of industrial resale and resale the building for for a profit. Uh, I wanted to put that in out there so we could consider that. I know moving. Uh, pretty comfortable here, I would think. But with the benefit of the high prices of industrial space, this may be a very valuable building. Except that costs us the underutilized properties grant. Yeah. Yeah. Any others? I it takes away your major grant. Yeah. And without I want, that, I don't think the town would put up the money. I suspect not, but I wanted to share that. You no, know, it's it makes Sorry. sense. That, as somebody who never thought moving there to begin with made any sense, yeah. among a lot of here. people. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I understand that the town. I think spent eight or nine hundred thousand dollars on the building. The, the building is in excess of a couple million dollars now because of the lack of industrial space. Anywhere within Franklin. Yeah, no, and the town gave up a, the tax base then when they did it. Um, I would think, well, I don't know, there were, before the population started growing again a few years ago, people thought that this elementary school might, might be the good place for town offices, but it seems like we have kids back in town again, so. That's good. Which is good. Yeah. I mean, it. You could have used town hall. I mean, there. Right. We. It might make sense. It kind of does away with the approach we're on now. If we don't get any money from from these grants. Right, then that's an option. Consider. 
But then again, the town's going to have to figure out, and you know, maybe maybe the gain on the sale of the building would be enough to pay for it. It's a different strategy. It, Altogether a different strategy, but I thought it was worth one bringing up. Well, so it's it, good thing to have in reserve. It. If if we don't get any money, right, we're going to need to think what to do. Yeah. Right. Keep thinking. Thinking. Keep thinking, Rich. You're good at that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, what what is the MHC funding grant, Judy? Is, is it Mount Holyoke College, or what does it actually stand for? MHC? Yeah. Where is that? It was one of your earlier listings. Or am I making that up? Oh, Mass Historical Commission. Thank that's you. that's not something that is currently available, and it's there are a couple of them. One is for planning. The the we we just got to concentrate on these three now. I think. Okay. Mass Historical Commission has a has a preservation grant. Um, we got something like $70,000 for town hall. Um, they also have a planning grant there. The we One reason we got the grant for town hall is that it was the first grant that the Whitley had applied for. So there was priority because they hadn't given anything before. We've used that up. Okay. Um, it and it's it's not in cycle now, and it it's they're they're a pain to deal with. I I would save that for the next round. Okay, that's fine. I just must say I needed to know what MHC was. Mass Historical Commission. <laughs> they require me... it's a hundred percent match. It's they require a preservation restriction. Uh huh. Which, in fact, the town had written for for one of the either of the private owners, so that that exists. Um, okay, so, um, all right. So, Judy, you're going to keep working on the grants, and Sylvie's going to help when she's free. You're going to contact the roofer and the window uh, for a second, person. And also contact the carpenters. And the so carpenters. Find somebody who is decamp qualified. Well, I, we may not need it if we separate those pieces out. That's why. You so that you know, we need, if it's over 150000 if the cost is over 150000 then you need decamp, not, which is. Still have to go to the, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure Mahan would be decamp. Not it sure doesn't really decamp. matter at this point. You have to put it out to bid to, to these people anyway. Eventually, we have right. to. Right. Right. Just I feel like, if there's pieces of it, it's nice to be able to. Yeah, offer well, we, it to but we need we need all the pieces to throw into the grants. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to say that there is a, um, a separate from decamp. I think that if something, I want to say that if something falls under like ten thousand, then you don't have to go through the bidding process. Yeah, well, it's over Maybe. ten thousand. You have to bid anyway. Yeah, but that being said, also with separating it out, um, it also doesn't look great if you're doing it piecemeal, but with the same, you know, contractors, it sort of looks like you're trying to get around. The oh, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I wasn't thinking the same contractors. I was thinking, you know, maybe there's some, I mean, somebody. everybody on our list is local, thing. but yeah. um, pretty much. But if there's, you know, somebody wants to do a Beer piece. A yeah. And also, it's nice to have lots of people from the area involved in the project because that makes it all the more meaningful. The, right. the other thing is, we're under a lot of pressure to minimize town and town employee involvement. And the more contractors that are involved, the more involvement there will be. So there's some merit to streamlining yeah. the right. people you're working with. Okay. 
But brother. what will happen eventually? Well, I don't, not with this face. Let me scratch that, never mind. Okay. Oh, I was just gonna say, I wish we were able to find ways of, of including people from the town to get involved in the building that aren't contractors. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that the insurance would allow that. So I'm I'm brothers hoping, are, I'm that's brothers that was what I was hoping for the second step that if we could find long term tenants and get them to do the work that they could they could find local contractors and people to do in kind stuff. But I don't think the town can do that. You're right. What what do we what or I don't even know how to ask this. There's stuff in the building that needs to be cleared out. And there is stuff in there. There's things like file cabinets and air conditioners and took a bunch of stuff out of there. Not everything, because I just checked the keys and checked the other day, you know, the day after it rained was where the floors wet. Um, which the main floor was not. I didn't go up to the upper space the day after the rain. I did today, but it's been dry. Um so is who's is that a place where people could be involved? Could we is isn't it just like a liability if you have sort of like a volunteer situation unless it that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Well what I was wondering is can we is it a is it a liability to even have people go in to bring stuff out? It sounds like basically or or does Keith's crew of whatever it is, two or three people need to bring stuff out and yeah. can we have a big tag sale? Can we invite people to bring their stuff and have it be a benefit for the mm -hmm. you know, fundraiser for the town that people can contribute in that stuff. way is there that much i mean there's more than is in this room well if it's town stuff then we should probably just plan to have the town move it over here right and we have storage space here <laughs> that would be my i just thought. they haven't done it yet <laughs> which I made think this me is wonder. a great thing to worry about after we get the money and start to do stuff <laughs> okay we got enough on our plate now <laughs> um all right. Well, so the other thing I wanted to throw in. And all, this is, problem, all the easy stuff is for the future. All the hard <laughs> stuff is there. The fun stuff. Um, so Julie Army, so I wrote to him based on talking to, uh, based on Rich having heard from the building inspector and different contractors that they needed a better sense of what was going to be the plan. And so I said, can you give us some guidance on this? Um, and he said, well, they're probably worried about whether you're they're doing work for business use or residential use, that the codes are different and whatnot. But then they offered the two, Sierra and Giuliani, to do a concept plan which would identify code requirements related That's to- That's what the feasibility study is. Okay. So that's why I thought I asked if there was Did a they difference. they volunteer to do it for free? I, that was my follow-up email. <laughs> so that was today. This is, um, so I don't have but, the answer. But, you know, I think, I think this in, involves sitting down with a lot of people getting a, a whole sense of what the possible uses are i mean we have from the original if you look at the original center school report george dole did something from george whitsett that looked at best uses of the building and that's in the report and talking about code requirements for what he knew okay um, but it was very high level. But, you know, what we have now is the the visioning, the master plan visioning survey, right. some other ideas. You know, it will, feasibility study will involve, 
hiring somebody to presumably sit down, talk to the plan, get us a range of ideas. And then they look at the building and fit them, look at the code requirements, look at the space and determine what, when you put those pieces together, what makes the most sense. Right. There are things like AD, accessibility. Right. So the five things they listed were maximum occupants, egress requirements, accessibility requirements, bathroom count requirements, graded assemblies separation, if any. I don't know what that means, that last one. I don't either. Oh. But there are things like uh, they left out sprinklers. Um, But that's that's the sort of thing that's 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 the feasibility study. Okay, well that's I would what be I... very surprised if they would do it for free. Well, we. But if they would, <laughs> then we don't need to put it out to bid, <laughs> right? Well, if we we're getting take... it for free. Well, we should build everything in we can just to. Yeah, if they're willing. I well, but I can't believe that they would do it for free to sit down and talk to people. It's possible that they had a relationship with Sierra. I well, mean, they, if I they mean, were willing to just re, re regurgitate what they've already done, fine. But I can't believe that they would be willing to devote professional time to sit down and spend time with the community and sit and evaluate and hear what we think are the important things. Well, that that's what they wanted to do in their bid. Yeah, actually. but then they thought they were going to own the building. <laughs> right. But they were getting some payback. With, with this proposal, they're not. One of them clearly has an interest in historic buildings. They wanted to meet with you all to debrief about their RFP, by the way. So you might want to make a point of doing that, and then you can talk with <laughs> but all the questions. Okay. Um, I want to know. Get anything from them you can. I still think we should be building everything we can into the. If we yeah. build, if we build like, I don't know, nine hundred thousand dollars into that underutilized property fund, and get five hundred thousand, we can wipe out the. We're gonna have to pick and choose what we're gonna fund anyway. So if they would come up with the feasibility study for free, mm -hmm. I still think there's a merit in putting it in there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't have any problem putting more in. Um, that's that's great. I, I just, I mean, I, I think, yeah, they had an interest in the process, not just from a money making piece. And I, I think, you know, I wasn't at all the RFP committee's meetings, but I think the fact that they sort of weren't precise about what they wanted to do was one strike against them. Yeah. And the fact that they were counting on the town, town PCA, CPA, CPA. CPA <laughs> money was another strike against them. Yeah. Um, but I think that they had some interest anyway, just in the process. I mean, well, it would be nice to have another architectural firm other than other than Joan Switzit to be familiar with the town. But they're a long know. way away, and their their normal projects are much bigger than this. I yeah, and their prevailing wage is much higher. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, the only other thing we have on the agenda that I think we haven't covered is the committee name and membership. I think we're still visioning. I you... think once we start applying for grants, we've gone beyond that, but. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Since Sylvie is doing that, then maybe we're not. <laughs> I just um, hate the word visioning. That's part of my bias. You do? <laughs> uh, well we're but no seriously are... i think we're at this point we're acting 
<laughs> well, are they mutually exclusive? <laughs> to um, me, to me right, a visioning well, committee just conceptualizes. It doesn't produce. Taking away visioning is a lot easier. Oh, really? It's not. It's not worth spending time on. Um, is there anyone else we think we should be inviting though to participate in this in any way? If you want me to like put a notification out that you want new people, I can certainly do that. If that's something you choose to open it up to more more members or. Once we get to the next phase, we're definitely going to need more people. We're going to okay. need builders. We're going to need somebody on the finance committee, probably. We're going to need um, if if it looks like there's going to be housing involved, we're going to need somebody from the housing committee. Mm -hmm. But but that that would be at that point you're an an implementation committee, not a not a visioning committee. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just keep in mind the question of more people and who, you know. It would know, be like nice to said. have some more people to do some work. Yeah. I, I was you. counting on Mark, actually. I, 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 yeah. He would be a good thing to bounce, bounce things by. He would. He would. You want to reach out to him? Okay. Be great. Um, all right. Anything else? We should be going Just over now. Thank you, too, for everything. You. Yeah, you're doing a lot. That's great. Absolutely. And Sylvie, her turn will come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, should we try and set up another meeting now while we're here? Most likely, but I'm giving it. When when would it be good to meet? We have to get you some numbers beforehand, Judy. But what would be a good time to meet? I meet well. I don't know. Second. I don't know, like seventh, eighth of May, in there. The other, the other grants are due on the fifth of June. We're, well, we're going to need to ask for the select board letter. Do we need to meet before that? I don't. I don't think we need to meet. We just have to draft something, which okay. I'll, I'll take the first draft of that. Um, my problem is I have no idea of my work schedule then. We can hold off. You want to just try and shoot for that week and then we can narrow it down to a day gets closer? It could be that week or the next week. It's not. Okay. I'm just checking four twenty seven through five five. Yeah, let's let's hold off a little bit. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you.